tutorial, I'm going to show you how to edit your Google Calendar once you have it created, um, the different ways that you can view it, how to view it offline if you prefer, how to print it, and how to search your Google Calendar for events. The first thing that I'm going to do is rename the last calendar that I made since I already have so many that are called test. So in order to do that, um, I'm going to click the down arrow beside the calendar that I'm wanting to edit, and I'm going to click calendar settings. The very first thing that I can do is um, change the calendar name. So I'm going to change it to Google Calendar Tutorial. Um, that way I know exactly what the calendar is for and I don't get them mixed up. Now I could go ahead and um, change my description if I didn't like the description that I had in there or if I didn't have one, but that's not necessary. It's just um, optional if you'd like. Um, there is something here about auto accepting invitations. Um, and you can turn that on or off. I just leave it on. It's just easier that way. Um, but again, that's your choice. If you would choose to embed your calendar, say on a website or something like that. Now, if you're using Google Sites, it's very simple to add a Google Calendar. You'll see a widget on there that allows you to do that. Um, but if you wanted to add it anywhere else, you would simply copy and paste this URL, and that will um, embed the document or embed the calendar into your uh, website file, whatever it is that you're working with. Uh, here it just tells you your calendar address, um, how you can, uh, this is a private address for the calendar, and so only certain people could see certain things if you wanted to do that. You can export the calendar and save it as a file on your computer or permanently delete it. So now that I've changed the name and done everything that I need to do um, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and save the calendar. Now, um, in order to add an event to my calendar, I'm going to go up here to create. This brings up a new window. So I'm going to say New Year's Eve celebration, celebration. Okay, um, and I'm going to change the date to December 31st. Now, you can choose to make it an all-day event or to repeat it. So if you wanted to repeat it, you could say this is going to happen, you know, every Tuesday. You can change it to, um, like, weekly, once a month. There's all kinds of things that you can do. So you can set reminders to yourself in this way as well. Um, so I'm going to put done because I don't want it to repeat. I can enter the location if I would like. Here's where I change which calendar I want to put it onto. So I'm going to put this onto the Google Calendar tutorial. And again, I can add a description. The description's nice if you're sharing the event with other people. So you can actually invite guests to this event. So you could put the details in as far as uh, what to bring, what to wear, whatever. Um, and then you can um, add the guests over here. Now, if you were doing something like, let's say, a CFIT meeting, you could put in the description specifically what the agenda is for that day. You could put a link into like a link to another document that has the agenda on it. Uh, you could put suggestions of what need, you know, teachers need to bring. Uh, there's lots of things. Any details that anybody who comes to this event might need to know would go here in the description. Uh, then you can, oh, here you can actually even add an attachment to it. So you could add a Word document and whatnot um, by clicking here and anything from your Google Drive as well. You can, just for fun, change the colors if you would like to. Uh, you can have it give you a notification. Where I'm going to talk to you about notifications a little bit later, but this would basically just be an alert that either is sent via email or you can have it sent to your phone um, in a text message if you would like that as well. Um, you can show yourself as busy since you will be at that event so the people that are looking at your calendar can see what you have going on when. Um, and then here is where if you wanted to make it a private event, right, right now I have it set so that anybody at WCPS can see this calendar. But if I wanted this event specifically to be private, I would just click here and um, do that. So I'm going to go ahead and save my event. And now um, I prefer the month view, but you can look at um, your Google Calendar daily, weekly, monthly, you can do it on a four-day rotation, um, or you can do it via agenda. So the agenda is kind of nice sometimes if you want to just look ahead at what you have coming up um, over the week. I don't know why I'm in October. Let me get here to um, December because that will make more sense. Uh, so anyway, now that I'm in December, and you can see here on December 31st is the event that I just made. If I needed to edit that event, I simply click, whoops, click on it, 
and edit event. I noticed that I have it at 1.30 p.m., so maybe I wanted to change it to 6 p.m. and just save the changes whenever you're done. It's asking me if I want it to be only saved for this event or all um, repeats that I have because I did set it to repeat, it looks like, weekly on Thursday. That's fun. Um, so I'm going to say to all events. So... Yep, now when I look ahead, every Thursday I have a New Year's Eve celebration. Obviously, that's not what I intended. So if I go back in to edit it, um, I can just click to save the repeat off and save it. Um, something that's very useful is um, the search tool here at the top. So let's say I'm planning my um, schedule and I want to know when my CFIPs are. If I just type in CFIP, since my principal has added all of the CFIPs to the calendar, when I search CFIP, I'll see all the ones that are listed uh, for future dates. Another thing that you can do um, here under settings is go offline. Now this is really only useful if you are using your computer a lot of times in places where you don't have Wi-Fi. Um, since I'm basically always on Wi-Fi, this isn't anything that I um, prefer to do, but if you do want to go offline, it gives you instructions for installing the Google Calendar app onto your computer and then saving your calendar there. And then anytime that you do connect to Wi-Fi, it will automatically update itself so that your offline um, calendar is up to date as of the last time that you were on Wi-Fi. So that's an option for you if you'd like. Um, the other thing that you can do um, is print. So you can choose to print your entire month calendar. Um, you see it here at the top, it shows that I'm showing my Heart Larry, my Google tutorial, and my FDE staff calendar. So that's how I know what I'm printing, but um, that can be helpful sometimes too. You can also do it like if you're in the agenda mode, then you can go and do, whoops, print, and it'll print your list of tasks. So that might be um, something that would be helpful for you as well. Coming up next, I'm going to show you um, about settings and notifications and your Google Tasks.